The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone, and big welcome to this rainy day that we can uh, be together and worship our Lord this morning. So thank you, thank you so much for being here. We also welcome those who are online this morning, probably in the coziness of their places, but we appreciate that you're here worship, worshiping with us. So let us begin to worship. Let us begin. Friends, we do not gather here because we are the righteous or worthy or have our act together. We gather as broken people, knowing we worship a God of love and compassion who is willing to give us a new start and who is forever faithful. in prayer. Merciful God, we gather together to offer you our praise and thanksgiving for the unfailing love you have shown toward us, generation after generation, and for the compassion you shower upon us day after day. You alone are our God. We are your people. We pray that your Holy Spirit would move among us as we worship. Open our hearts and our minds to see you at work among us, encouraging, challenging, uplifting, and inspiring as each one has need. 
May our worship bring honor and glory to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, creator of all, thank you for the gift of this day when we can meet in this place. We come to adore you, to serve you, and share with our brothers and sisters in Christ about your many blessings. Thank you for the peace we feel when we come to stand still before you. When we could at least try to put aside the worries and daily situations to be in your presence. You, O oh God. Remind us that we are in the presence of a God who loves us, who calls us by name, who forgives us, and who wants the best for us. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for we recognize that we must face ourselves and see ourselves as you see us when we are in your presence. And while there are many times when we have tried to be our best like you, there are other times when we don't. When we seek our own desires and interests in the first place and neglect to respect another person's feelings or way of life. When our motivations for our actions are based on what we want, what is good for us, what is best for us, and we act selfishly. Our purpose here is to become more and more like you in the image we were created so that we, like Christ, can bring your kingdom here on earth and prepare to live in your heavenly kingdom forever and that is why O oh lord we ask you today to help us look honestly at our lives rely on our priorities adjust our attitudes and seek to live in a way worthy of bearing the name of jesus christ as christians in our homes in our church in our other places of work and community. Lord, we thank you for the events of this week 
that's just happened, in which we were able to reach out and serve and help others, such as giving grace. We give, we give thanks to the volunteers who helped to distribute the goods, but also to those who were blessed by them. As Jesus said, we must seek this, to serve and not to be served. Thank you, Lord, for our children who enter school, high school and college this week. Bless them and give them your intelligence in this academic year. We ask you for the teachers to provide them with wisdom in teaching. And we ask for all of those who work in the schools which serve our children with love and dedication. But Lord, this week we also brought us rain and a storm, not only to our city, but also to various states in our nation. So we ask for your protection for those affected by floods and damage to their homes and businesses. We ask you especially for those who suffered directly from the effects of Tropical Storm Henry and Hurricane Ida. Oh God, may your protection continue to be present in the lives of volunteers and people who are selfishly helping to mitigate the pain of so many. We continue to keep in our prayers the soldiers who have returned home from Afghanistan. Bless their families and all of those and we want and we thank for you for bringing them safe and sound. But we also ask you for the people of Afghanistan, especially for the children and women who are suffering from the hatred and resentment of some. We pray for the small group of Christians in that place. We pray for the displaced ones. We pray for the sick, but we also pray for those who have implanted fear and suffering so that you will soften their hearts of stone so they can serve their people in love and not with hatred. God of goodness and mercy, invite us to continue praising you and blessing your name at this hour. We pray all these in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hear these words from Psalm 145 as read from the message. Your kingdom is a kingdom eternal. You never get voted out of office. God always does what he says and is gracious in everything he does. God gives a hand to those down on their luck, gives a fresh start to those ready to quit. All eyes are on you, expectant. You give them their meals on time. Generous to a fault, you lavish your favor on all creatures. Everything God does is right. The trademark on all his works is love. God's there, listening for all who pray, for all who pray and mean it. He does what's best for those who fear him, hears them call out, and saves them. God sticks by all who love him, but it's all over for those who don't. My mouth is filled with God's praise. Let everything living bless him. Bless his holy name from now to eternity. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This past Monday, August 30, many parents, including me, um, particularly me, posted some photos and pictures of our kids on their first day of school. I'm sure you saw some of those pictures. pictures. It was so beautiful, so beautiful to see the pictures of many of our children entering to school. 
I'm proud parents. Proud parents posted pictures of their children. So many little ones began or continue their daycare, their preschool, their first day of primary school. Other children continued one more grade higher in the school level. And some started a new stage in middle school and high school. But I also saw pictures and some of those who were starting college. I also saw photos of those parents that left their kids there with tears in their eyes, with hugs and moments of emotion. The truth is that these pictures of these specific moments in the lives of our children and young people also remind us of our own route and our own road in our time as students. Starting a school was rarely easy. Many of us live the experience of separation from our parents as something that was not just for a few hours of class, but seemed to be for eternity. Over time, this separation did not become so complicated. We could return to a new grade with new classmates, with a new teacher, without significant problems. But when, when did we feel this separation again? When we finished one stage and started another stage. But these experiences are not only experienced by children as the students. Parents also share them. Parents who live a time of anxiety almost similar to that experienced by their children. Between shopping for school supplies, the clothes they will wear, or simply the food that they will bring. Some more organized parents will make calendars and schedules to guide themselves during the school year. Others will simply keep it up to date. But be that as it may, the start of a school year means change. Changes in the routine of household components, changes in schedules such as taking turns for certain children's activities, these changes will make life better for everyone at home. But everything has a beginning and uh, stressful as it may be, it still needs to begin. So the psalmist, the psalm that we just heard this morning, the psalmist begins by declaring his desire to express his praises to his God, King of all creation. No one is worthy of that praise more than our God. And it is his desire that these praises last forever. He appeals to generations so that they take charge through the centuries of announcing the greatness of God. And his attributes as God are summed and in splendor, in majesty, in, in glory. In addition, God has always shown himself good and merciful in his relationship with humanity. Slow to anger. But condescending and compassionate towards the sinner. As he tells us in verse number 8, 
which is not part of our reading today, and I invite you to do your reading, still it helps us to understand the text. And it says, the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. So the psalmist proclaims God's intervention in human history to care, help, and protect. We are not at the mercy of dark forces, nor do we leave our existence alone. Still, we depend on the action of the Lord Mighty and loving, who has a plan for us, a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of mercy. So in times like those that we have been living, we can come to feel alone. We can come and feel unprotected at the mercy of fate. So let's make this psalm our prayer today. Narrating the extraordinary actions of God, spreading the memory of His immense goodness, acclaiming His victory, and feeling His merciful presence. Have you noticed? Have you noticed that many times we face something new with uncertainty? Everything new brings us that insecurity because of course it is something totally unknown i remember when we had to drop off our our daughter friend for the first time at tidings of peace mennonite school in york this was a small school located on the edges of the city as parents, it was difficult for us to leave her there. First, because the place was new to us. The neighborhood where the school was located was not the safest. Because as parents, we had our own apprehensions about what it would mean for our daughter to start in that school. And it was a difficult morning. It was truly a difficult morning. More than a few tears fell from our eyes when we left her there. But the exciting thing is Fran, our daughter, was happy. And she looked pleased. To go to this new school. We were her parents. We were her parents. The ones who felt the weight of leaving her. She was happy. Over time we saw that decision made. Of putting her in that humble little school. That was a blessing to her life. And to our family. What our daughter learned and lived in that place is still carved in our hearts. The Lord upholds all who are failing and raises up all who are bowed down. Today I know that many of us are living difficult moments. These can be health, these can be financial. This can be work and retirement. You can keep listing them. But the truth is that God is always there to lift us up, to sustain us and guide us amid these difficulties. But what is necessary to do when those moments arise? Invoke his name, says verse number 18. And it says, the Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. So there's no other way. If you do not invoke and call his name, 
what results do you think you will have? One of the significant problems we Christians have is, is that we assume that God knows our whole being. Are rising and are going to bed. And that's true, but we also believe that it is not necessary to tell him what is in our heart or what we are experiencing. But the word is clear. Call to me and I will answer. Answer you. And you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. So during this time, primary school students in many schools have been asked to bring their own Chromebooks, small laptop computers that they can work with online. And one of the indications is that as students carry their Chromebooks loaded to use them at school without constantly being connected and charged. You will imagine what it will be for a classroom to have 25 computers connected at the same time, especially if you are working with young children. If they don't have a computer, there are few possibilities that they will participate in class. If they have to do any homework or exercise in courses online. And they need the little Chromebook. Now transfer this experience with the students to the life of the Christian. Imagine that you are told that you have to carry your heart with Christ's charge for your daily work. Because if you do not... If you do not, you will not have the same participation in life, if at all. The problem, brothers and sisters, is that we forget Christ in church. We forget Christ in church. We forget Him on Sunday when we leave the sanctuary. The burden that remains for the rest of the week is not enough to keep us spiritually charged and ready to work. In this sermon series, we are told about going back to school in a clear metaphor for what our children are experiencing as students in their respective, uh, respective schools and colleges and universities. But this same premise is applicable in our Christian life. God is attentive to sustain us, lifts us up, and redirect us in life. No matter what beginning we may have, no matter how fearful and uncertain we may have, no matter how anxious or stressed we are, God is God. Take God with you. Take him to your school, take him to your work, take him to your home, and wherever you go. Don't think this Sunday service is enough. And I will repeat that. Don't think that this Sunday service is enough. When we are in school, we learn to trust our teachers, have a relationship with our classmates, and know the value of many things in life. Go back to school of God. And feel that you return to work for the week. With your backpack full of blessings. With your heart fully loaded and charged. And ready for what the week will bring for your life. So you can say. You can say. Like the psalmist this morning, my mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his name forever and ever. Amen.
At this time, I would like to make an invitation for, especially for our kids, and I would like you, if you have kids among you, or you have grandkids, or, or, or your own children, invite them to bring their backpacks for next Sunday. We will have a special service of blessing the backpacks, and so we will pray for them, and we will pray as well for our teachers. But I would like to ask you to reflect the following question. Brothers and sisters in Christ, where do you hope for new beginnings in your life? Where do you hope for new beginnings in your life? Think about that. We are all experiencing new beginnings. This is not a matter of the first day of the year. Where do you hope for new beginnings in your life? So keep that question during the week and reflect on that as we journey together with this sermon series about back to school. We are going to use this metaphor of coming back to school. To reflect in our return to God every day. During this time, families are starting new beginnings. And uh, especially from this week, we remember uh, Greg and Laurie Smith that they are seeing us online this morning. And they will be moved to Illinois this week. Is a new beginning. So I invite you, brothers and sisters, to pray for Lori and Greg as they have this transitional time. And we pray also for all of those who are starting a new beginning. Maybe you are ready to retire soon. I know one that I'm not going to mention him, but I know that he will be retiring pretty soon. And I know that some others are starting new beginnings in so many different ways. So it's not just our kids. So now let us have a moment of prayer, especially for Greg and Lori. We will miss them, but we will ask God to protect them and guide them in this new journey. So let us bow our heads and pray for them. God of new beginnings, we ask you to guide and protect Greg and Lori Smith. As they move to Illinois, we humbly ask that they may feel your blessing in this new stage of their lives. O oh God, who always invite us to leave new beginnings, trusting that you will guide our steps. May this farewell also be a unique Opportunity to continue trusting in your protective hand. We ask that you allow this next chapter in their lives to be fruitful and positive. We pray this in the name of Jesus who meets us on the way and shares with us his goodness and his love. Amen. Now I invite you to sing our parting hymn.
what a blessing we had. I have to tell you, we were not expecting the rain, but God certainly is blessing us this morning. So thank you so much for being here this morning. And as we go, please feel the blessing of the Lord. So let us receive the benediction this morning. And as I always said, as I bless you, you bless me. May the Lord of new beginnings, whoever accompanies you this week, that begins. And may the Holy Spirit guide you in your walk. And Jesus, the Son, be the reminder that you are not alone. Because God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Before we leave, we want to remind you, hopefully you have received your newsletter, that beginning next Sunday, September 12th, we will be going to a two-Sunday format worship service, but they will be different services. The first service will be held at 9 a.m. Again, that's a change in time. So the first service will be at 9 a.m., and that service will be designed as a celebration of praise and worship. The second service is at 11 a.m., Again, that's at 11 a.m., and that second service will be designed to be a more intimate and prayerful uh, service. So we invite you to join us for worship as we move forward at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. Let us join in our blessing song. Mm -hmm.